Hey there, got a big day at, Ro I mean, Satin Hill Farm. Super excited, uh, got a big day planned today. I gotta start working on getting the beds ready. And should I play the old intro? No, yeah, all right, let's play the old intro. All right, so I'm not putting the intro back in the videos, but uh, for those of you who've been watching since the beginning, a little nostalgia for you. Anyways, first day of bed prep today, and the chickens have started to clear out land for me, but before I do that, gotta move the chickens so they're not getting too angry. Let's do that. Got the chickens moved. They're just gonna be here for a day, so a very small paddock. And after we get everything cleared out over here, I'm gonna move them back to do some more work. Gene's here today to help out. I don't think he'd miss it for the world. <laughs> so I'm super happy to have him here. Let me show you what's going on over here and what the plan is. So hope you guys got to see the video talking about my plans here. And I'm gonna get more into the details today and moving forwards. So out here is, you know, this is where my beds used to be uh, when I was running my farm before. And so the soil here is fantastic, uh, but since this year, there's been grass out here and I've been uh, grazing the birds out here. So the soil is gonna be awesome. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna start with two 14 by 100 foot farmer friends tunnels. And today we're gonna be doing the, the, the ground prep. And what I need to do here is two things. One, I need to do a really shallow tillage here. This is super bumpy and not level. And so I need to get that smoothed out. And so that's one thing. And the other thing, is the drainage and one of the main reasons why I set it up this way is was not just because of light exposure because I have a lot of trees and trying to get it in the middle but the drainage and that's gonna be a big part of today's product is to dig drainage ditches between each tunnel and above the top tunnel so that the water can come off the tunnels away from the tunnels and down the hill so that's gonna be part of the big project here and I want to take a second to talk about tillage because you guys know I am a big fan of no-till and I am not opposed and I've said this many times to an initial tillage so if you need to, uh, you know, move ground around, like if you need to like level things out with a excavator or anything like that, or you need to till, do that that first time, get everything squared away, and then don't disturb it anymore. You can start building your beds. So that's what today's all about. We're gonna do a shallow tillage for where the beds are gonna be, and we're gonna dig the drainage ditches, and then I'm gonna move the chickens back on there. So that's the plan. But let me talk about the layout for a second. So you can see in this overhead here that there's gonna be two tunnels as I said with the drainage ditches and then uh, you, they basically are facing east west roughly and so uh, on the south side of those two tunnels will potentially be an area for a third tunnel so we're not going to prep that today but that's the plan for future expansion is to have that option for a third tunnel so that's the plan uh, we're first going to string out some lines and draw some lines on the ground and we can start bringing the the bcs out here and start working working the soil before we can get the bcs out we got all of the stuff marked out so we have 14 feet for each tunnel and then the drainage ditches that are going to be going between the tunnels and above the tunnel we're going to use three and a half feet so that we can use a four foot piece of landscape fabric to cover that so we have this all marked out we have the first string line going across we're just going to paint the ground uh, with some of that marking paint so that we can, when we're running the BCS, we can keep track of where we're at. So we're gonna do that now. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, uh, the decision to till, I take very seriously and I do think it's okay to do it, as I said, the first time and that's the big disturbance to create the land that you wanna grow on. Because once you start growing, you can't really manipulate the land very easily. So it's best to do that now and then get it, weeds under control and then, um, and then you know go into your no-till practices. Borrowed this BCS from Brendan at Weaver Acre, so big thanks, Brendan. Um, this is, I think, for me that I thought about buying these a long time ago, and the reality is, I don't use it very often, and so it's really nice to be able to share it with other people. And maybe, you know, there's a couple of farms near you that can go in on it together, something like that. Maybe sort of some sort of co-op deal. 
Um, but they're great, they're super powerful, and one of the nicest things about a BCS versus a garden tiller is that you can change out the implements. So this is the tiller that's on here right now, and it's very powerful. Um, but the best thing here is we're gonna use this rotary plow, and I'll show you that in a second. But one thing I wanna point out here, hopefully you can see, is this is the area where the beds used to be, and so the soil is super dark over here, and behind me over here, you can see I have that red clay soil. So you can sort of see the difference here uh, in the soil, what it used to be, and what it is now and I'm just really excited because a lot of the work's been done uh, in building the soil over the last few years here with uh, growing vegetables here and uh, grazing animals and all that kind of stuff. So let me show you the rotary plow and what that looks like. So this is the rotary plow here and this uh, attaches with the PTO on the back of the BCS and it's basically just like a corkscrew type deal and it throws the soil to the side. It's really great for building beds, that's what most people use it for, but today I'm gonna use it to uh, throw the soil out of the drainage ditch into the area that's gonna be where the tunnel is. So we tilled it first to loosen it, and now we're gonna run this guy here and dig out those ditches. This is after a couple passes with the rotary plow, and I think painting that uphill line was really crucial in getting a really straight cut through the hill. Um, the bottom line got covered almost immediately, so we ran a string line here, and I'm gonna take probably one last pass with the plow, and then uh, we'll probably do some hand raking and shoveling just to tidy it up, but man, it that thing is pretty cool. So another pass or two with the rotary plow, and this is where we're at right now, and I think it looks amazing. Um, Gene's kind of just shoveling out a little bit of the loose bits here, just to try to clean it up and get it nice and smooth. And so I'm going to start rototilling the tunnel, so the area just below this now. And we're going to be doing, as I said, two of these trenches and two tunnels today. Got the rototiller attachment back on the BCS, and now I'm going to till up this area here. This is for the first tunnel. And just try the goal. The goal here is just really to level things out as much as possible. There's a lot of ups and downs. There used to be beds here, so left and right as well. So we just want to smooth it all out. That way we have a nice surface for building beds on. Well, that's a really great start and I just I knew it would look like this and the soils nice and dark and rich and it puts things in perspective like when you're starting a farm and you're working with poor soil you know like at Raleigh City Farm in a lot of spots and uh, it's taken all year to sort of loosen up and, and get it looking rich and I just forgot like you know I put two years in building the soil here and all it's still here so invest in your soil whenever you can uh, you will it always pays back and so I'm really excited to get this leveled out and stuff. Do a little bit of raking, but after we're done today, we're gonna move the chickens back in here and let them uh, eat anything that germinates and grows for a couple weeks. Um, and you're probably wondering why I didn't tarp, because I usually tarp, but the reality is in the winter time, I don't have enough time to tarp because there's not enough heat units, and so the tarp is not nearly as effective. So we're gonna be using the animals, and then we'll do lasagna beds, and um, a little bit less than ideal. I like to take things a little bit slower, but it's just the time I have, and. Sometimes you gotta make sacrifices and uh, do the best you can. So, gonna go try to level some of this out, finish the ditch on the top side, and then get the next ditch going and till up that second tunnel area. All right, I think we got everything done we need to get done today, and we're running out of light, it's getting pretty late. Gene and I have been out here pretty much all day, cranking away at this, and took multiple passes with the tiller, followed by the rotary plow, and I think we got it to a good spot. I think we pretty much got what we need to get done today. And we're pretty much out of light, as I said, so I'll come back in the morning and show you what we did. All right, it's the next morning. It looks like we had a little bit of rain overnight, so I'm curious to see what it looks like out here. I really wanted to wrap up this video yesterday, but Gene and I worked all day and actually had to put the camera down for a while. And I apologize for not showing you the second half of the project, but it was pretty much the same as the first half. So uh, it just took most of the day and ran out of light. So I just want to show you what's going on today. We got a little bit of rain overnight, so I'm curious to see what it looks like. So check this out. This is what we did.
So I'm standing in one of these drainage ditches here, and this is one of the most crucial things, as I've mentioned. We got the two areas for the tunnels on either side of me, and when all the water comes off of those two tunnels, it's gonna go into this ditch and down this way, and there's a slight pitch down this way, and behind me there is, uh, it keeps going downhill into a drainage ditch that uh, most of the water from my property and neighboring properties go out to. So the natural way of the land here, or the lay of the land here, is that it goes down this way, and out that way, so this is gonna be perfect. So I think we got a lot done. It's, uh, I realize after you till and you get a little rain, like it is super muddy out here with all the clay, but we'll get the soil covered eventually and it should be all good. Just keep in mind, when you have tunnels, all of the surface area from those tunnels gets dumped off the edges. And if you don't tell that water where to go, it will go back into your tunnels or where you don't want them. So I gotta go move the chickens and then I'll talk a little bit more about this. Got the chickens moved in here and they're gonna be in here for a couple weeks and the idea here is that they will finish clearing it and I'm actually glad it rained last night and we're gonna get a little bit more rain tonight and into tomorrow and that's fantastic because when you till uh, you invert a lot of the weed seeds to the surface and they're, that are in the ground and they're gonna germinate now because it's a little bit warmer right now and also we got the, the rain so as those seeds germinate and start to grow the chickens will have a few weeks to clear all that out so hopefully that'll all happen in the next few weeks and they'll take care of most of that for me uh, there'll be a little bit of manure out here but because i'm building lasagna beds i'll be building on top of that and it'll all be buried and so i'm not really worried about contact and stuff plus i'm not gonna be harvesting out of here for a while so that's, uh, that's the plan with the chickens here, and I did I do really wish I had time to tarp this. I think you get a better uh, weed suppression, but uh, it's just the reality. You know, I leaving Grawley City Farm uh, just recently, or just gave my notice recently, and trying to get things going as quickly as possible here so I can get some income and get stuff grown as quickly as possible. I think this is the best option. So after we build the first tunnel and this is all cleared, I will move the chickens down to tunnel number two, and they'll take care of that area. Now, one other thing is I did mention possibly having a third tunnel down there, and that piece of strip of land there is really complicated with drainage and stuff, and I gotta move some soil around to get it level, but I don't really wanna talk more about that today. But what I wanna really stress here, again, today is all about drainage, is you guys know I'm on a hill here, and so the water's gonna be coming down the hill this way, and into the ditch, and then out this way. And so that's sort of how things worked before. I had, uh, when I had my beds out here before I had ditches or trenches, wait, what's the difference between a ditch and a trench? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm sure there's a difference. Uh, water diverting around the beds and down the middle. So when it rains really hard here, as you guys know, if you live in the south or have heavy rainfall, we get a couple inches in a couple hours sometimes and it just, it moves quick. And so you need a big area for the water to collect and then move away. So that's why I'm not taking this stuff lightly. I, I've seen it here before and I've seen it damage and, and destroy my bed. So taking the time here. So again, water come down the hill and off the tunnels, down and then away. So that's, uh, that's the plan out here. And it feels really great to be working back on my land. I kind of forgot what it's like to farm here in some ways, cause I've been at Raleigh City Farm all year. It's so peaceful here and quiet and I love it and it's my property and um, it just feels special to farm the land that you live on. So that feels great. And another part of this year is that I've really been neglecting a lot of my property because I've been spending so much time taking care of Raleigh City Farm. When I come home, I don't really wanna work, you know, <laughs> outside after I've been farming all day. So I'm really trying to catch up with things like my compost bins are falling apart and I gotta do some landscaping and gardening and stuff and try to get the place cleaned up a little bit. It's It really has been neglected and I'm excited to be doing that. So that's what I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.